Hey everyone, welcome back to our telescoping series video. When we're talking about a telescoping series, we're talking about one where the terms get smaller and smaller, and we have lots and lots of reduction of terms in the middle of the series, those terms reducing to zero, and so we're only left with some terms from the very beginning and the very end of the series. Let's look at sort of how that might happen. So let's say I just have my sum here. I'm summing some sequence from one to whatever term, we'll call it the k term. And if you look here, we get some sort of pattern like this. This is just a for instance. Um, so you can kind of see what's happening, right? I have some stuff that's going to reduce and some stuff that does not. I have my minus a fourth and my positive a fourth, obviously adding up to zero. And the same thing's going to happen with the next pair. Uh, the same thing's going to happen with the next pair. However far we go out in the list of terms and add those together, we're going to keep getting that a negative term cancels with the positive term after it. Okay, so we'll get lots and lots of cancellation going on, massive amounts of canceling of terms if we have a bunch of terms. And then this is a positive term, so think about what happened here. This positive fourth reduced with the term before it. This positive eighth reduced with the term before it this positive 16th with the term before it, so this positive 1 over 2k with the term before it, this negative term in order to reduce would need a term after it, so it doesn't really have anything to reduce with. So I get this positive half here, and I get this minus 1 over 2 to the k plus 1 at the end. Let's look at a couple of these and do some examples. So we have my sequence is 1 over n times n plus 1. We want to find uh, first of all, the sum of the first hundred terms, and then the sum of an infinite number of terms. The way to see that this is a telescoping series first will be to actually break this up into separate fractions. So oftentimes when you're doing telescoping series, we use the process of partial fraction decomposition to break this up into two fractions. So if I think of 1 over n times n plus 1, and I want to write that in terms of partial fractions, then I will write that as something over n plus something over n plus 1, a and b, I'm going to choose here. Um, I would get a common denominator and then I would only solve the tops. So common denominator, the 1 would not change, the a would get multiplied by n plus 1, and the b would get multiplied by n to get common denominator, and these would be the numerators if we got a common denominator. Okay, so if you're having any trouble with partial fractions when you're doing these, check out our videos on partial fractions uh, for some basic help with those. So if I solve for a and b here, uh, first I could go ahead and let n equal zero. If I let n equal zero, that would give me one equals a times one, plus b times 0, and that would tell me that a is equal to 1 when I solve that. Uh, since this factor is n plus 1, let's go ahead and use n equals negative 1. If we use n equals negative 1, we'll get 1 equals a times 0 there, and then the factor next to b would become negative 1, so we'd get b times negative 1. And if we solve this equation, that will solve for b, and we'll get that b is negative 1. So based on a is 1 and b is negative 1, then our partial fraction decomposition for this 1 over n times n plus 1 is going to be 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1. Okay, let's go ahead and write our sums that we're trying to solve in terms of our new decomposition here. I'll go ahead and say here we're going to do the sum from 1 to 100 of 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1. And then we'll also consider an infinite sum. What happens if we go forever with the same expression 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 1? Remember what we said from the beginning was we were going to look at just imagining the sum of k terms, so some number of terms of our sequence here. So in other words, we want to look at this expression. And once we sort of see the pattern of what reduces term-wise and what does not, then we'll go back and decide on both of these. So if I look at when I have the first term, plugging in n equals 1, then that's going to be 1 over 1 
minus one over one plus one, so that'll be one minus a half. And we'll go ahead and add the second term, so that will be when n is two. If I plug in two, I'll get one over two minus one over three. And then we'll add to it what we get when we plug in n equals three. So we'll get one over three minus one over four. We will skip a bunch of terms. And then remember we're going to k. So I'm gonna go ahead and actually write down the last couple of terms. So I'm gonna leave some space and we'll come back and write this. So let's look at the very last term, which would be the kth term. So if I plug in k, that's just going to replace n with k. One over k minus one over k plus one. And n equals k minus one would be the term before that, right? Term number down by one. So that'd be one over k minus one. One over k minus one plus one would just be one over k. So this is what we get. And the reason we're just substituting in k is so that we can see what will happen as we decide to add up a certain number of terms. And k is going to be our certain number of terms. So we go back and we look at what reduces now. Um, you probably can see that the negative term in each expression reduces with the positive term after it. So that's going to be zero. And this minus one third plus one third is going to be zero. The minus a fourth will reduce with the plus one fourth that we didn't write right after it. That'll be zero. We get lots and lots of canceling. Um, does this one over k minus one reduce? It does. If you go back and look at the pattern, the first term in this, each set of parentheses reduces with the term in the back of the set before it. So this term is actually going to reduce with what's right before it. That'll be zero. And then this minus one over k plus one over k is also going to reduce to zero. So this idea with telescoping series, you can see everything, we get massive cancellation in the middle. This sum actually becomes one. Everything reduces except for the very last term, minus one over k plus one. Okay, so that is our sum, right? That's our sum of the first k terms of our formula here, one over n minus one over n plus one. So for our partial sum of the first hundred terms, what we're really saying is what is the sum when k is a hundred? Well, we have a formula for it now. So we know when k is a hundred, then the sum is going to be one minus one over 100 plus one, right? So we'd get 101 there. You can get a common denominator here if you want. Say 101 over 101 minus 1 over 101. Is that a tongue twister? I don't know. And then we get 100 over 101, all right? So the sum of the first 100 terms is that number, 100 divided by 101. If we have the sum of an infinite number of terms, infinity is not a number I can really plug in, but I can look at the limit, right? So this one, I look at what is the limit as k approaches infinity of my expression, one minus one over k plus one. Well, I think we can tell uh, that this fraction is definitely getting smaller and smaller as k gets bigger. So the limit for this term here should be zero, and we should be getting closer and closer to one. So if I sum up an infinite number of terms, I am approaching the value of one. All right, let's do one more example for you just so you can see how this works. So we want to take the partial sum of the first 50 terms and then an infinite sum of the sequence two over n times n plus two. Let's go ahead and partial fraction this out. So if we look at two over n times n plus two and write that as partial fractions, that would be something over n plus something over n plus two. We'll go ahead and get a common denominator. Two would stay in the numerator for the common denominator. Common denominator, uh, we would multiply into the a fraction an n plus two that's missing below. And multiplying into the b fraction, what's missing below, we would multiply in n. So that would be the numerators that we solve in our partial fraction problem. 
plugging in n equals 0 will allow us to get rid of this back term here. So that will give us 2 equals a times 2 plus b times 0. That will give us that That will give us that a equals 1 if we solve that. And then to make this factor 0, I could plug in negative 2. So let's say n equals negative 2. And if we plug that in, we'll get 2 equals a times 0 plus b times negative 2. And for this one, then if I solve this, I'll get that b is negative 1 again. But now if I rewrite my sequence in terms of its partial fractions, I get 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 2. So we'll continue then by looking at the sum of the first k terms using our new formula 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 2. All right, let's go ahead and establish some terms. So first thing, if n equals 1, then we'll get 1 over 1 minus 1 over n plus 2 would be 1 third here. We'll add to it the next term, which would be n is 2. When n is 2, we'd have 1 half minus 1 over 2 plus 2, which would be a fourth. So that's 1 half minus 1 fourth plus, let's go ahead and do the third term. So that would be 1 over 3 minus 1 over 3 plus 2. So that's 1 over 3 minus 1 fifth. And then plugging in n equals 4, and then we'll skip some. So plugging in n equals 4, we get 1 over 4 minus 1 over 4 plus 2, 1 over 4 minus 1 over 6. Just be sure if you, you know, see the pattern and continue that you're legit on your pattern here. So we skip a bunch. I'm going to go ahead and skip my k minus 1 term, skip to the next one, so my kth term, so this would be when n equals k. That's just going to be the formula we have here, right? So that'll be 1 over k minus 1 over k plus 2. And that'll be our last term. And then here we would have the k minus 1 term, so the term right before the end. And that's going to be 1 over k minus 1. minus, and then if I plug in k minus 1 here, I'd get k minus 1 plus 2, which would be 1 over k plus 1. Okay, and so that is our expansion so that we can look at these. All right, so what reduces here, you might notice, the third doesn't reduce with the half, but what we do have is we have cancellation of things. Um, the minus third, you'll notice, is the first thing that reduces with the plus one third. It reduces not the first term of the next set of parentheses, but the first term of two sets after. Okay, so if I look at this, that's going to reduce with this to zero. And then I'm going to have the negative one fourth here is the next thing that reduces with the positive fourth there. And then the next thing that would reduce would be the negative one-fifth with, there's going to be a negative one-fifth over here somewhere, two sets later, so those will reduce. Your negative one-sixth is going to reduce with two sets later in here that we skipped, so those will go away. So now if we think in reverse, any positive term is getting reduced by not the set before it, but by two sets before it, this last term. So first term here, go two sets back, and it's reducing with the second term. So first term here, if I go two sets back, it's reducing with something in here, and those will go away. Um, this positive term right here, plus 1 over k, is reducing with two sets before it, so somewhere right before this and that's becoming zero. So this last term doesn't have anything two sets after it to reduce with. This one also two sets after it, there's nothing there. This is the end of our list here. So what you can see is we have two terms left in the front. Everything else is reduced except for two terms that we have at the very end here. So we'll go ahead and write our expression down. We have sum from one to k of 1 over n minus 1 over n plus 2. 
is equal to, we have a one in the front, we have a positive half in the front, and then at the end here, I have minus one over k plus one, and I also have minus one over k plus two. And so that's as simplified as that gets, and that's okay. So remember our first thing that we wanted to find was we wanted to find the sum of the first 50 terms for our original sequence there. Well, that's going to be one plus one half minus one over 50 plus one, so that'd be minus one over 51, minus one over 50 plus two, so that would be one over 52. We can probably leave that as our answer, otherwise we'd have to get a common denominator uh, you can get that uh, if you're, you know, super interested, I suppose. Then this is 3875 over 2652, you know, as you certainly would have seen just by looking at it, right? Ah. And then for our other problem, we were looking for the infinite sum, sum of an infinite number of terms. And this sum will actually be the limit as k approaches infinity of our formula we have here, one plus one half minus one over k plus one minus one over k plus two. So we're just looking at what is the limit of these partial sums, right? Uh, you can see that this fraction and this fraction are both going to go to zero as limits, and so we end up with one plus a half and an infinite number of terms. We will be approaching the number three halves. Okay, hopefully this helps you with your telescoping series, everybody. Uh, get those partial fractions going. Thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video.